and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on malaria. Malaria parasites belong to the genus Plasmodium, where there are more than 100 species existing, where 5 of them cause human disease. The transmission occurs through the bite of an infected Anopheles mosquito, and only female mosquitoes will transmit Plasmodium, as only the females require a blood meal for egg development. Transmission in the absence of a mosquito is rare, but there are some routes such as vertical route, transfusion of blood, organ transplantation and also needle sharing activities. These are the five malaria species that cause disease in humans, which are the Plasmodium falciparum, Vivax, Malaria, Ovale and Nosei. Each of the species have different incubation periods. For epidemiology of malaria, you can see that there are a lot of people, around 3.2 billion of people, are at risk in 95 countries, which is almost equal to the half of the world's population. And every year there are millions of cases, with a lot of death as well. In Africa, the most prevalent parasite is Plasmodium falciparum, which is also the most severe type that causes a lot of deaths worldwide. Whereas the dominant parasite outside of Africa will be Plasmodium vivax. For the life cycle of Plasmodium of malaria, it is dependent on both the humans and the mosquitoes. So the sporozoids are transferred to a human horse when an infected mosquito bites the human horse. And these sporozoids travel via the bloodstream to the liver where maturation occurs to form schizons. And these schizons contain around 30,000 merozoid offspring. So for example, if in a case where a dormant stage exists, for example for Plasmodium vivax and ovale, and it is inadequately treated, the merozoids can be released from the liver after weeks, months or years, and later causing a recurrent disease. The rupture of the schizons will release the merozoids which enter the red blood cell. And then in the red blood cell, the merozoids will form larger trophozoids and erythrocytic schizons. When these erythrocytic schizons rupture, they will cause the clinical manifestations of malaria where the symptoms will start to be present. So clinical features, we have to consider malaria in any patient who have a fever who has previously visited an area and endemic of malaria. So for presentation, we have to ask whether they have a history of traveling, especially to endemic areas. And usually patients present with fever where there are different patterns for different plasmodium species. For example, it will be alternate day fever for falciparum, vivax and ovale. Whereas for Plasmodium malaria, it will be every third day where they will have fever. But then most patients have no specific fever pattern. So we have to take note as well. Other clinical features include headache, malaise, myalgia, diarrhea, and cough. So you can see that the symptoms are non-specific. They are very general symptoms. So on physical examination, we expect to check the temperature and there will be fever and otherwise unremarkable. Unless if the the, the diagnosis is delayed or the disease is severe, then the patient may present with jaundice, confusion or even seizures. For investigation to diagnose malaria, we have to do immediate blood testing, where we do microscopy of the thick and thin blood smear. And this test is quite sensitive and specific in experienced hands. Another test is the rapid diagnostic test detection of the parasite antigen. This can be used for initial screening if expert microscopy is unavailable, for example, out of working hours. Other investigations include full blood count, creatinine and urine output, coagulation profile, glucose level, ABG and lactate, and also urinalysis. For the treatment of malaria, falciparum is the most severe type of species. So 
first of all, I will talk about treatment of falciparum malaria. So it, the treatment depends upon whether the disease is uncomplicated or severe. So the features of severe disease include impaired consciousness or seizures, acute kidney injury, shock, hypoglycemia, pulmonary edema or acute respiratory distress syndrome, spontaneous bleeding, acidosis, hemoglobinuria or paracetamia more than 10%. So these are some of the features of a severe disease. For severe disease, the treatment of choice is to give artesunate. And another treatment can be quinine as well. So artesunate regime and quinine regime. Whereas for uncomplicated disease, can give artemisinin combination therapies known as SCT, which can achieve rapid clearance of the parasites by combined action at different stages of the parasite cycle. So on the other hand, for treatment for non-falciparum malaria, which includes Plasmodium vivax, ovale, malaria, and nosai. So if there is mixed infection with falciparum, we treat as falciparum. If it is a non-falciparum disease, but it is severe or complicated, we treat as severe falciparum as well, where just now we give the artesunate. If it is uncomplicated disease, we can treat with SCT as uncomplicated falciparum. Chloroquine can also be used for non-falciparum disease. And in addition to other treatment for Plasmodium vivax and ovale, they will require eradication of the liver hypnozoids with primaquine. However, there is risk of hemolysis with primaquine in patients with G6PD deficiency. So we have to screen for G6PD before giving primaquine. That's all for this video. Thank you.